Welcome to J-Heart Model Works. For this build, we aren't starting off with the body. Instead, this go around, we're gonna kick the build off with the engine and chassis. Welcome to my workbench, let's get started. All right, before we get started on painting, there is a little bit of prep work we need to do. We went ahead and cut all the parts off the sprues for the engine and the chassis, and now we're going to join the two halves of the engine block together with some Tamiya Extra Thin. I am gonna go around and put a nice liberal coat all the way around both parts so that when we sandwich them together, they will form a nice strong bond. I'm also gonna go ahead and add some Tammy Extra Thin to some of the outside seams as well, just to make sure we get glue in all the seams. The front casing for the engine has a pre-molded in oil filter, and honestly, I'm not a fan. Now I have a 3D model of this engine that I purchased from Colts 3D, and when I printed it out, I tried to scale it down, but it's a little too big, but the oil filters are just right, and these look a lot better in my opinion, so I'm gonna use one of these instead. We're gonna go ahead and take our display nippers and we're gonna cut off the original, kind of close, but we wanna leave a little bit of material there so that we can go ahead and sand everything nice and flush and leave just a little bit of a base for our oil filter to glue to. Now these are the front shocks and I have a little bit of concern on these as one side looks like it's at a completely different angle than the other. But test fitting, I think they even out once the part is set in place. But of most concern right now is the seam that runs through the springs. I got this tip from Paul at International Scale Modeler, and we're going to take some Tamiya Extra Thin and we want to brush it across the ridge following the angle of the springs. We want to keep brushing over and over, and because the seam line is thinner than the spring detail, it'll melt the ridge first, leaving our spring detail intact. Keep an eye on it though, and stop as soon as you see the seam go away and go work on the other side. And from the looks of it, this tip does a pretty good job. On a couple of the under panels, there's some raised branding lettering. We want to remove that, but at the same time, there's some rivet detail in the area we want to protect. I'm going to lay down some masking tape over the rivets first to protect them from the sanding sticks. Then we can send the lettering away with some sanding sticks and some sponge sanders. Now with all the lettering sanded away, it does look a little rough here, but after a couple of coats of Mr. Surfacer 1000, this will all be nice and smooth again. The engine has had plenty of time to sit and cure up, and now we're going to go back in and clean up the seam. We're mainly going to focus our attention on the underside of the bell housing and the gearbox though. The top of the gearbox is completely covered by the chassis, the top of the engine will be completely covered by the intake manifold, and the bottom of the engine block will be covered by the oil pan. Now, I will sand the oil pan area a little bit just to make sure I get a nice smooth fit, but I'm not going to waste a lot of time trying to get every single seam on the whole engine perfect. The last thing we need to take care of are these ejector pin marks on the bottom of the chassis. We are going to start by sanding the area. The ejector marks typically sink in, but when the pin pulls out, it sometimes pulls the edge of the plastic with it, leaving a ridge. So we want to sand that down first.
We will then add a bit of super glue to each of the pin marks to fill them in. Now you can either wait for it to dry or be impatient like me and hit the glue with some Insta set. Once the glue is cured, we will then go to town with our sanding sticks and sponge sanders again. Now I'm not going to show the whole process, you're probably about as tired of watching me sand things as I am of sanding them. Just know this will take a long time, especially the two on these curved edges. I don't get them perfect, but hopefully I got them enough that after some filler primer and surfacer, they won't be as noticeable. The kit valve covers have some really nice raised lettering and we're going to detail paint this with some Vallejo Model Air Silver. Now I got this tip from Zippy over at the Garage with Zippy. I'll put his link down in the description. This tip is right up my alley. As you guys know, I tend to detail paint with anything but a paintbrush. This time we're going to use the eraser side of a mechanical pencil instead of the lead. We want to dip the eraser in our silver paint, then tap most of it off on the side so you can see the eraser is silver, but it's not flooded with paint. The more paint you have on the eraser, the more it will flow off and get all over the part on the areas we don't want paint. Once we have most of it tapped off, we're going to gently tap the eraser down as straight as possible so the rubber presses on top of the raised detail, but doesn't press far enough to touch the flat of the valve cover. When the paint stops transferring onto the raised lettering, just dip it back in and get some more paint, tap most of it off, and go back to adding in our detail. Now definitely go check out Zippy's channel. He's got some really nice builds, and he's got a beautiful one-to-one -one truck named Ruby that you really need to check out. We want to keep tapping the detail in little by little. When we're done, we can clean up any mess with a Tamiya cotton bud. One side's going to be wet, the other will be dry, because we're using a water-based acrylic silver over the red Tamiya lacquer base, we can just rub the silver with the wet side to loosen it up and get most of it off, then finish cleaning it off with the dry side. The acrylic silver will be delicate, and it is possible to rub it off while handling it, so what we're going to do is we're going to let this dry for about an hour, then we'll spray a really light mist coat of Mr. Color GX112 Gloss Clear over it, let that dry and then spray one medium coat over that. This will lock in the silver and protect it from rubbing off. Don't spray anything super wet or the lacquer can loosen up the acrylic and cause it to run and make a big mess. Next up, we're gonna take some unthin Mr. Hobby Super Metallic Super Rich Gold and we're gonna use the lead end of our 0.3 millimeter mechanical pencil to lightly tap in the gold on the various pulley bolts. The mechanical pencil tip for detail painting like this is a tip I got from Dave Thibodeau a few years back before he passed, and honestly, this was a game changer for me for detail painting. Now the 0.3 millimeter pencils are kind of hard to find as they are a drafting pencil, and they're a little expensive. I think I paid about 15 for mine on Amazon, but it's one of those things you're only going to buy once and then just buy lead refills, which are a lot cheaper. This is a level of detail I could never get with a brush. Once we finish up all the pulley bolts, we're also going to hit the various bolts on the front engine cover and around the engine to give the engine a little more detail pop just all over the engine. Those little bits of gold all over like the engine and the transmission are really going to help liven it up. Now for our next bit of pre-assembly detail work, this kit doesn't come with a lower radiator hose, which is one of those things that just bugs the crap out of me, and I've been told it's something judges look for at shows. So we're just going to go and drill a 1mm hole down here where the lower radiator hose would connect to the water pump, and we'll add that hose in later with some wire. We also want to drill another 1mm hole in the bottom corner of the radiator, where the other end of the hose will connect. 
And before we can assemble everything, we want to hit all the parts with a wash. Now I'm using Tamiya's panel liner, and we want to get it into all the little nooks and crannies to really bring all that molded in detail to life. For the engine parts, I like to mix in some of the Tamiya black and some of the brown and the dark brown. Kind of gives it more of an oily look, a grungy, grimy engine grime to it. Now one thing we want to make absolutely sure we do is we want to get the black and just the black in between all the springs for the coilovers. I didn't cut these up and make real shocks and springs, so getting this black wash in here will accentuate the springs and make them look a lot more realistic. Once all the wash is dry, we can clean the excess off with our cheapo cotton buds and some odorless mineral spirits, and we'll be good to assemble. Now we're going to move on to assembling the engine, starting with the heads. We're just going to add a little bit of super glue to the mount points, and I like to add a little extra on the flat surfaces, then we'll drop the heads in place. It is important to get the right head on the right side, as the holes for the valve covers are keyed to only fit a specific valve cover, but I found I could get the wrong heads in the wrong place. Now we're going to go ahead and glue on the valve covers. Like I said, the spacing for these holes is wider on one side than it is on the other, so you can only get the valve covers on a specific head. Next up, we're going to go ahead and glue on the oil pan, and as you might notice, we are using the kit oil pan. Now I did 3D print this oil pan, which I got from the Dodge Viper engine that I got off of Colts 3D. Had to do a little scaling to make it fit, and in my opinion, this is a much nicer oil pan. Unfortunately, this is the oil pan for the Dodge SRT-10 pickup truck, so we won't be using that. Our next part is the power steering pump, and the way we're going to do this, we're going to put a little bit of glue on the pulley, put the power steering pump into place, then fit the pulley assembly onto the front engine cover so that we can then line up the power steering pump and get it straight before the glue sets. Next, we're going to add some glue to the front of the engine and we're going to glue the front engine casing and the pulley assembly into place. And of course, it wouldn't be one of my videos if I wasn't out of frame doing something. Now, before we glue in our exhaust headers, we need to get our starter in place so we don't cover that up. Then we can glue our headers in place, and once again, I'm out of frame. Now, the headers have two posts, one on each end, and they glue into holes. They have different part numbers, but they look like the exact same part, and they fit on both sides equally. I also did a test fit with the exhaust pipes, and they fit on the exhaust pipes on both sides as well. Now, one of the 3D parts we are keeping is the oil filter. I painted mine black and orange, like the Fram Performance Series. We're going to cut it off the supports and sand it flush. Then we can go ahead and add some glue and glue it into place. And that's going to wrap up the basic engine assembly. You probably notice we don't have the intake manifold on yet. Given how the intake manifold and the filter case sit on the chassis, I'm going to hold off on that until after we get all the chassis work completed. Was just about to start assembling the front suspension when I realized I can't find the steering rack. So we're going to go ahead and make one using some 1.2 millimeter plastic rod and some electric wire insulation. We're going to start by bending one end of this plastic kind of close to roughly about 45 degrees. Don't want to bend it too hard or it will break. So we want to be a little careful with it. We'll do a quick check here. We kind of want this bend to follow the angle of that lower A-arm. Now once we have our angle down, we're going to take the flat section of these needle nose jewelry pliers and we're going to smash the plastic and get it nice and flat. Once we have everything bent and flattened on this side, we're going to go ahead and take a permanent marker, make a couple of marks where the frame rails are, as well as a mark on this end where we want to trim off the end and we're going to use our display nippers to just cut that off. Now before we do anything else, we want to go ahead and cut this off the rest of the plastic. Before we form our other end, we need to add some rubber boots, and for this we're going to use the insulation from some 18 gauge speaker wire. 
Using some wire strippers, we want to strip off a small section of insulation. Then we're going to trim that up and cut it into two equal parts. Then we're going to go ahead and work our plastic rod through the insulation and slide both pieces on the plastic rod. Now that we have our boots on, we can bend and flatten the other end of the steering rack. Again, I'm sorry, I'm out of frame on this. And we'll do another quick test fit to see where we want to cut this end off at. We'll go ahead and trim the other end with our display nippers. And this thing is ready for some paint. Now we did not glue down the rubber boots and that allows us to slide it back and forth so we could paint the entire part with some flat aluminum. And now we're just going to go ahead and glue everything into place. Put a little dab of glue on each of the mount points for the original part and we'll just set this into place with some tweezers. We do need to fiddle with this quite a bit to make sure we get it nice and flat because we don't have those mounting points like we would on the original kit part. The exhaust pipes have four mounting points. There's two on each side of the chassis and the pipes need to wrap around the chassis. Now I tried my hand at heat staining these starting with some Tamiya clear blue and some clear red, then a whole lot of Alcloud hot metal sepia, which is kind of like a clear brown. That always comes out really glossy, so I then hit it with some Mr. Color flat clear to dull it back down. I thought it's way overboard, but Mitchell from Insomnia Hobbies is or was a Dodge mechanic and says they're pretty much spot on. Once we get them in place, we can add just a little bit of glue to all four points on the inside of the chassis so there's no glue mess. Next, we need to glue in our front sway bar. There are two mount points here and you need to make sure they click down into place so that it sits flush. With the sway bar in place, we can now glue on the front lower suspension. There are eight glue points for this part. There's two in the middle of the chassis, two more up near the engine mounts, one on each of the wheel uprights, and one on each end of the sway bar. And they all have to sit correctly and be held down into place. The ends of the sway bars have these little mounting holes. You need to watch them or they won't want to sit in the holes correctly. The instructions say to install the rear end first and install the rear differential and the drive shaft in. They then say to install the front suspension, including these front springs. After that, they say to install the radiator and the engine next. Do not do it in this order. You will have issues either getting the engine in on the drive shaft or be completely unable to get the water pump and radiator hose in. The water pump has the radiator hose as one piece and it has to glue to the front of the engine and goes under the spring bracket, which will be impossible to do with the radiator in place. It's nearly impossible to do with just the springs and the engine in place. Do yourself a favor. Don't do it like I did. Glue the engine in first. Glue the water pump and radiator hose to the front of the engine. Then you can glue in the radiator and the springs and then move on to the rear end. So here I go putting glue on the four mount points for the springs. There are two on the frame and two right behind each of the uprights. To get the springs in, you need to slide one end in and give the sides a squeeze. The bracket will flex slightly and you can get the other spring to slide inside the A-arm and then press it home, making sure the spring ends sit right behind the uprights. Now to glue the engine in place, we'll put a little glue here on the transmission cross member and on these two engine mounts. The engine falls into place really easy. You place the pin on the transmission on the cross member in the little hole and the engine just drops right into place on the mounts. But make sure it sits all the way down on the engine mounts or the engine will interfere with the hood later on when you put the body on. And this is where I have to fight and struggle and nearly break the suspension to get the water pump in place. Put a drop of glue in the front of the engine and then we will twist, press, and wiggle and eventually the shock brace flexes just a little bit and lets the water pump slide into place. And I did cut a lot of that footage out. The radiator has two holes to seat the electric fan and the round edge of the fan goes to the bottom of the radiator which contains the two mounting pins. 
We can then add a couple of drops of glue to the radiator mounting points on the chassis and we'll slide the radiator into place and make sure it goes all the way down into the holes and that the upper radiator hose sits correctly. As mentioned in the prep section of the video, this kit has no lower radiator hose. We're going to use some Protec heater hose to make one. Now we want to start by dry fitting the hose in place and getting a measurement of how much we need. Then we can cut off a piece and strip a little off the end. We'll then add a drop of glue to the end that we stripped and we can fish it up into the hole we drilled into the lower water pump. Now I'm not sure what happened to all the footage of me struggling to get the radiator hose up into place, but it got messed up. So poof, we magically have a lower radiator hose. Now, just like the Audi R8, this kit has separate wheel wells that need to be glued into place. We're going to go ahead and put a little bit of glue right along each of these little edges and then carefully get the wheel wells set into place. We want to make sure that they sit correctly so that it doesn't cause any kind of interference or mess with our suspension later. And we'll just repeat that process on the other side. Now to glue in our rear sway bar, there are two mount points here. Going to put a little bit of glue there and then just press it into place. And before we can install the rear end, we need to assemble the rear differential. Just going to put a little bit of glue here and then slide the back into place. Now the mounting posts on each end of the drive shaft are long enough that I don't even have to glue it into place. All I have to do is slide it into place and the posts will hold it and keep it from falling out. Now I made a big mistake here. I lucked out and it didn't really get me too bad, but you really, really need to put the rear springs into place before you put the rear differential in. Instead, I slid the rear differential onto the mounting post for the drive shaft and glued it into place. And later, when I have to go put the springs in, I nearly break the rear suspension and almost have to resort to cutting the springs to get them to fit into place. And here's where I realize my mistake. So, what I should be able to do is just drop these springs right inside that A-arm, right into the corner of the wheel well, tilt those little two mounting points out so they sit right up next to the uprights, and then drop the rear axle on top of it. Instead, I have to try and fish these springs that are angled, the mount points are angled. So I have to fish them in between the wheel well and the upper A-arm, still getting them around the axle. Once I finally get them to slide in and around the axle, then I can glue the end of the spring to the inside edge of the wheel well and tilt the upright points back out towards the uprights. Once we finally have our springs in place, we can glue on our rear chassis panel and lower suspension arms. Now, there are six glue points, two of which are these posts that slide into tubes on the back of the panel. And we wanna make sure we get these pushed all the way down. The panel wants to stop a little short. In doing so, we'll keep the A-arms from gluing into place. So you really gotta give them a good push and they'll just pop into place. And because the springs aren't exactly in the right place, I gotta kinda wiggle those little upright posts to get them to sit properly in the suspension arms. Now I am gonna go ahead and hit this little joint here with some Instaset, and that'll just kinda hold it into place a little better while that glue sets. Now we gotta fiddle with the spring mount points on this side too and then we can hit it with an insta set also. A little more pushing and nudging things into place and we have our rear suspension complete. The engine is in, the chassis is done and it's time to wrap this up. We need to assemble the air filter box. 
We're going to glue the air filter material into the top of the casing. And I should have probably painted the filter material white, but I honestly didn't think anyone could see it once the build was done. Turns out, if you look at it from the right angle, you actually can't see the filter. So I did end up brush painting it off camera later. Once the air filter is in, we need to glue the bottom on, and you need to watch this part as it's a flush fit and it likes to shift. So the 3D model has a beautiful intake manifold that is so much nicer than the kit part. I scaled it down so that it would fit perfectly on the heads. I included the throttle body and the fuel injection rails and printed it all up as one piece. I test fit it with the air intake and found out that it was too long. So I printed another one without the throttle body and then realized that a single one of the air intakes is the size of the entire air filter hose. So we're using the kit air intake manifold. We'll just add a little glue here and slide it on. Next, we'll add a little glue to the air cleaner mount point and a little to the top of the radiator, and we'll set the air cleaner in place. Now we may not be able to use the kit intake manifold, but I did print a set of the fuel injection rails separately, which we will be adding on. So we're just gonna add a little bit of glue here on the bottom and then carefully set them in place on the intake manifold. Because the kit part doesn't have the mounting points like the 3D part does, this is gonna be a flush fit and we're gonna need to hold it in place until the glue sets. And that is going to wrap up this video. Now, I've done some test fitting with the body and with the wheels, and so far everything seems to fit well and sits on all four wheels. It has been pretty cold here, so I'm not sure if I'm moving on to the body or the interior next. It's been too cold to paint for the body. But for right now, thanks for hanging out with me. I appreciate you taking the time to watch and build with me, and I'll catch you on the next one. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. Also feel free to leave comments, feedback, critique, or anything else in the comment section below. I enjoy interacting with all my viewers in the comment section and try to reply to all the comments I receive. If you want to catch future videos, please consider subscribing to my channel and make sure you click the bell notification icon so you can be notified when I upload new videos. As always, thank you for watching, keep modeling, and have a great day.